welcome back. Today we are picking up with a leak down test. So we've got uh, OTC gauges here. Leak down test, if you're not familiar, is really going to uh, help us diagnose any issues with the motor, if there was any. Uh, check out the last video, we did a compression test on all four cylinders here. Everything looked good. Uh, the valves themselves look to be good to go with no major issues and the valve clearances also look to be good. So last thing for us to do is move on to a leak down test. So we're gonna pressurize each cylinder with compressed air. The other fitting here, the other gauge uh, is gonna go inside that cylinder. We'll make sure it's at top dead center and then pressurize the system to see how much air is leaking past uh, the cylinders and the piston rings and all the fittings, valves, that kind of stuff once it's at TDC and where the air is escaping. Generally saying we should have something kind of quiet so we can hear if the air is escaping from the exhaust side, from the intake side, and or from the engine cases themselves past the rings. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out today and uh, we'll see how she does. As you see here with this cylinder head, uh, it's pretty deep. It takes a whole lot to get all the way down there for the, the spark plug. And because of that, the way that the head is designed, you have to have the correct adapter. Uh, this one is just over 16 mil um, for thickness. So that way it will fit inside and plug into where the spark plug goes so we can actually complete this test. There is a special tool from Ducati so you can get one of those. However, we modified one here with a grinder to make sure it worked with this OTC kit. So we're gonna go ahead and run with that. Just as a quick heads up, make sure to Loctite your adapter to um, the fitting. If you don't and you screw that into the head and back it out, you may have an issue with this adapter sticking all the way down there inside the head, which is gonna be one heck of a challenge to get out. So just as a heads up, that's what I did. Again, this isn't a how-to video, more of just how I did. Moving on to a quick explanation of the gauges. You're gonna pressurize the one side from your air compressor or compressed air source, however you're gonna do that. It's gonna go through to the other gauge and it's gonna go out, which again is where our adapter comes in and it's gonna fill that cylinder full of air. The discrepancy between the two gauges themselves is gonna tell you how much air is escaping through that cylinder. So whatever you've got the air pressure charged at versus what is actually being read, uh, that escape value is gonna be noted in this quick and easy chart, and it'll tell you how much leakage you have. And based upon that leakage, gives you a good idea of how uh, good everything is inside, how everything's sealing as far as the piston rings, the valves, uh, head gasket, all that good stuff, right? So we're gonna go ahead and fire this up, make sure it's good to go, and we're gonna see what it produces. With our leak down test, we've already checked the valves for clearances, making sure they're good so we don't have anything being held open like an exhaust valve that's out of tolerance or an intake valve that's out of tolerance. That's already been checked, so I recommend doing that first. That way we get the most accurate reading uh, of your leak down test, right? Uh, what you're going to need to do is have something to turn over the crank. Remember this motor, this V4, is counter rotating, right, to reduce any of the gyroscopic effects from the wheels. So just remember that when you're turning it over. You wanna make sure things are lined up at TDC. Once that piston is exactly at TDC, that's when you can introduce air into the system. Uh, I'd still recommend holding your crank with some kind of breaker bar or socket and ratchet, something like that, because all that air is gonna be pushing down on that piston. And if it's not exactly at TDC, if it's a degree or two off, it'll shove that piston down, which will make that crank rotate and throw everything out of whack, right? So make sure you either get a degree wheel or you know how to find TDC uh, based on the markings for the cams on the other side and or reading the lobes of the intake and exhaust valves before you go ahead and start that test. Big thing is just make sure it stays at TDC so that crank doesn't rotate and throw everything off. So we'll set it up and see how it produces. So we got cylinder one set up. We've got our hose connected to the uh, the cylinder up here and spark plug hole so it can feed air in. We've got our supply line squared away with our compressor run. So again, supply pressure, this is gonna be the output pressure and the difference between the two is gonna tell us how much air is going into the system and leaking out through other places. So I'll adjust our regulator here. Again, we're gonna hold 
to make sure that our crank doesn't turn over in case we don't have TDC. We'll go ahead and put some pressure in and you'll see that left gauge start to rise and the right gauge start to rise. So we're keep adding pressure. And again, we're pressurizing that cylinder, which is the number one. Oh, we're doing what we can here with one hand, a little squirrely. So we do hear a little bit of leakage already. Not terrible. So we're just sitting, as you see, under 80, like 78-ish PSI on the input. Obviously it's gonna drop as the tank depletes and we're a little above 70 there. We'll watch it drop here. So we don't have too much. We'll calculate the percentage here in a second. What is that, 75 right now dropping and 70. So we've got a five PSI dropped according to our chart. At that rate, you're looking at about five or 6% leakage, which isn't horrible, right? Cylinder number one, we'll see what the rest of the cylinders get. So let's move on to the next one. Again, TDC, pressurized cylinder and same process. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and back off. We can hear a little bit of pressure coming out, which sounds like the exhaust side and the crankcase, which is to be expected. We got about 4,000 race miles on it. That looks to be pretty good and still pretty healthy. Let's go on to the next one. Cool, so we'll reset on cylinder number two. Uh, we did that because it looks like there might be a little bit of carbon or something like that with one of the valves causing a bit more of a leak. So again, it's still set up on cylinder number two and we're gonna go ahead and retest. And this one looks a whole lot stronger. All right, so input, output, Man, they're almost identical, right? So there's hardly any leak down on cylinder number two, which is good. And again, compression readings were good and valve check is good. We will go on to cylinder number three and look at our results. We're set up for cylinder number three. Again, TDC, add pressure. There's another one that looks really good. So you see there, 84, 85-ish on the supply side. And maybe one or two PSI lower on the output side. So again, still really good, way under the normal values for leak down. Let's go on to cylinder number four. Cool, set up for cylinder number four. Our last one that we've got going here. All the rest are checking out pretty good. Again, we're at TDC. We'll add pressure, kind of funky one-handed, but we get it done. So our supply side's a little low because we've used a bit of air in the tank. That's an old compressor. At any rate, you guys can see the ratio there. We've got about 80, 81 or so, and maybe a half a PSI on the other side, maybe one. So again, hardly any percentage for leak down amongst all of these cylinders. Cylinder one looks like it's the only one that's leaking a bit, but it's still well within an acceptable tolerance. So as you can see, we are good to go. This motor is in excellent health and uh, we are gonna put this back together with all the stuff and the things and let's get this thing running again, all right? So if you guys like this stuff, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'll keep kicking out videos for this new bike. I didn't see anything as far as a leak down test is concerned. So that's why I wanted to run it, kind of show everybody, yeah, you can do this on these old school way. It is a lot of work, don't get me wrong, because the motor is completely out. It's not in the frame, I get that. However, if you guys run into these situations, you can still use some of these old school tools. It's not all electronics. So you can do some of this stuff and apply it to the race motors and go forward from there.